Hey buddy, do you want to buy some neon? I've got all the colours here because this is actually a colour swatch panel for LED emulated neon and I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at the construction of it. So let's take it over to the bench and we'll take a closer look at it. Let's do that right now. So what we have here is a demonstration panel. It's designed to show the different colours of LED neon that are available and uh, it runs from a 12 volt power supply and we turn it on it lights up very vibrantly, looks quite good, a good range of colours as well, including a few whites and some nice uh, deep golden yellow, bright yellow, lemon yellow, I think they call it, and a good orange. Um, but interestingly, and the reason I got this is really just to take a closer look at the construction of it. Interestingly, all the colours are phosphor based. Now, I thought they might have gone for, um, let's just focus down this, uh, I thought they might have gone for pure red LEDs, but they're all uh, based on the blue emitter chip with phosphor over it. I'm not sure why they've done that. To be honest, I think the red would have been more vivid and more reliable if they'd gone with the red LED, but you can get the, the pure red LED strip, so that is an option. However, what we have here is slots that are routed in the same way that the signage is made. And the router is plunged in at this end, and then it's run the groove and lifted out the other end. And that might seem a bit obvious, but what's not so obvious here is that there is a little lip. It's left a little indent here on either side because the plastic strip that has special tools, which I'll show you in a moment, uh, for actually cutting it, it has these little grooves on the side. And when you push it into that, it goes in quite firmly. It's quite tight to put it in, actually. And some of these are maybe sized a little bit too long because it does have good, shall we say, compressibility. So you can have it a wee bit too long and just smoosh it up. But uh, one of the reasons uh, I wanted to take a look at this is to see how they've terminated it. So if we lift uh, some of these strips out at this end, you can see that the links are actually on the top. I always thought they were drilled through and underneath, but the only one that's drilled through is the power supply. And it's uh, actually, you know what? You know what? I shall take a picture of this corner up here and we can take a much closer look at it. One moment, please. That's better. Now let's take a closer look. So I'll zoom in like this. And you can see actually where this is plunged in and it's routed and you can see the little grooves that's left in there. It means that if the, the router stopped mid-groove, you'd have to actually, you couldn't just lift it straight up. It has to plunge in at one end and then cut that groove and then be lifted out the other end. However, the connection comes in through a hole here and they connect it to the nearest two pads. And it's worth mentioning that they've just been running these wires. I mean, I know they've got clear insulation in them, but they've been running them just in front of the LEDs. And likewise, the links are just basically tapped onto the nearest pads, and they have these wires available as big packs of pre-tinned uh, lacquered wire. And they literally just tap it onto these and then dress them in, make a nice straight line, and then they jam the strip in and it just wedges those in. Uh, interestingly, they'd left the film on both sides of this, uh, the protective film on both sides of this acrylic, and to get it off was quite tricky with all these wires going over the front. You had to peel it and then slice it and then try and pull it from underneath it. Um, but interesting construction, very straightforward. I'm going to look at the signs I see in commercial displays now and see if it's also run the front, but I think that probably is a very easy way of doing it. Um, the, can you see the little indents on the LED tape here? It's designed to be folded in round curves and uh, go round bends. And just to prove a point here, I mentioned that you can get it in the pure red chips, and uh, these are pure red chips, and they've also got the little indents that let you kind of crease it to go round corners. Uh, they really abuse the LED tape in these things. They really ram it in, so to speak. Uh, now, let me show you some other things. Let me show you the tools that they use with this. So if I put that out the way, and I bring in the exhibit. This is a thicker version. You get it in different uh, widths. I went for the bigger ones for some experiments. But you can... Uh, you get it in big rolls, about five metres or more, and it, it's easy to cut with a sharp knife. But you also, if you want to uh, mitre in, suppose you want a nice sharp line here where it butts in, you can, say, cut a section like this with this blade, which is a right angle blade here. Uh, you've also got a curved blade, but you can cut in with that right angle there, 
and then you can cut and I am not an expert at this but you can then cut into this stuff with the same right angle and then they just physically go into each other almost seamlessly but obviously not as well as a seasoned Chinese worker just bang this stuff out. Likewise when you get to the end of the run you can if you get for that routered end you can then use this curved one and just slice down it's very easy to cut and it puts a nice curve in the end. Again probably better if I was a Chinese worker because I'd be doing this all day long. Their fingers must hurt just pressing this stuff in all the time. But that's an interesting uh, construction of that panel. I will say that the... I'm just going to grab it again. The panel itself is very stylish. It's the sort of thing that would look quite nice on a wall, uh, just as a illuminated sort of piece of art. Uh, it's quite neat. And the power consumption at 12 volts is about an amp, but it will run down at lower current. You can run at 9 volts, and it still looks visibly quite bright. Um, well, amply bright for indoor use. So you could use a, a 9 volt power supply for these things if you want your sign to last longer and not be so glaringly bright. But there we have it. Um, the LED swatch panel. Now, this was actually quite expensive. This was about £25 shipped, which is not expensive by... UK or American or European standards of manufacturing, but for something from China, it's actually quite pricey. But there is a lot of work. Keep in mind that 12 channels have been routed in, 12 sections of tape have been put in, and then the 12 pieces of the cover material have been put in, all matched to the colour. Say, for instance, this pastel blue one is for the ice blue LEDs. It's very neat. I do like this construction. It's much easier than I was expecting. I'd envisaged that they were drilling holes through to hide the wiring out of the back, but of course it's clear. And the wires are very thin, so you don't need to hide them. You can just run them over the front. That must make manufacturing very easy. Very neat design indeed.